hopefully you can hear me okay over the monstrous 50 mil turnies. Four years. Man, the engine feels tight. Oh, a little winter weight since we last went out. So, uh, yeah, God, it feels as uncomfortable as I remember. So let's head to MOT, but obviously I'll leave you guys with what's happened in the last two weeks to the little 748. Good afternoon YouTube and welcome back to episode 5 of Ducati 748 project. So as in the previous video the old battery had unfortunately wasn't holding suitable voltage so I have purchased a replacement. Now for those of you that aren't aware when you buy a new battery if it's not a lithium if it's a lead acid like this one here you do actually need to put the acid in them so we will do that now and let it all settle and then leave it on charge so that hopefully we get a good cranking start. And like I said, I was only temporarily using my uh, ALC8 battery just for the test previously. So it is currently around three degrees in the garage. The old asbestos roof there, the ice has been on it, it's melted. Getting the odd drip on the bikes, not ideal, but unfortunately we are gonna have to just soldier on. It's not a nice evening to be tinkering. But as I say, not too much left to do. Essentially do the battery, I've got to bleed all the brakes and the clutch system and do the coolant as well. And then once that's done, we can then get the girl on the road ready for MOT next week. So with all the chambers filled with the battery acid, give the battery a little rock, nothing too wild. You don't want it spilling out. This is just to make sure any air bubbles are worked out. Now, if you are struggling to see the level, you can take a torch and put it on the back like that so you can see that you're in the correct point. So now we just got to leave that for an hour. Then after that, put the ceiling plugs in and then leave it on charge for a few hours to then check the voltage in the morning. So it's the following evening, again, another cold one in the garage, but I've left the battery on charge all evening with my little baby bike C-Tech charger and it all came back clear. And then I've left the battery to rest for the day. So I've got the voltmeter rigged up here, negatives connected. If I put the positive on, 12.75 volts. So that battery is ready to go. And like I say, we'll put that in the bike now, change over the coolant and the brake fluid, and then it'll be on to the MOT. So with the battery fitted and the clamp back in place, it almost seems like if I leveled it out, I don't get a good grip on it. So I have put the angle in there. It doesn't do my OCD justice, but it keeps it lovely and secure. Obviously terminals reconnected with the new nuts and bolts. 
and then you've just got the battery overflow runs off down there so keeps it just out of the way so the next thing to check obviously we've confirmed that the voltage is good on the battery fuel pump primed all indicators and lights working so we are good to go so brake fluid typically lasts around two years and the reason for that is it attracts moisture you get moisture in the braking system you get a spongy brake pad feel it needs to be changed so we've got the front brake reservoir up there clutch reservoir there obviously front brake calipers bleed nipple just there and then on the rear you've got the reservoir and the brake caliper and the bleed nipple on the rear now with my last fluid change it almost looks like it's old in there it's actually 80 racing blue um, unfortunately that's discontinued now and i've had a quick look around the garage and i haven't actually got any premium brand stuff but like i say just to get it to mot that will do absolutely fine it's going to be better than moisture filled so start with the front so I'll just undo the two screws on the top of the reservoir and then uh, give the brakes a bleed. I have got an air compressor that with like a vacuum bleed system, but unfortunately the uh, pipe work is all plumbed into the front of the house. So I'm just gonna manually bleed it, but because the bike's got no ABS or anything like that, it's not gonna take very long at all. So I've taken off the reservoir cap. And as you can see on the sort of rubber gasket, there's a lot of like moisture in there so it certainly does seem to attract it especially in this damp garage and you can see where it's like furried in the cap as well so certainly worth doing especially if the bike doesn't live in a climate controlled environment and like i say the book spec on these is two years anyway for most bikes and cars so we'll get that changed now so with the reservoir cap off i now have my 11 mil spanner which i've gone with a six side one just on the actual bleed nipple and normally this little device down here plugs into the airline and you just open the uh, bleed nipple plug the air compressor to it and it draws it but today we're just going to be using it as a drain tank and like I say I'm going to run the fluid down in the reservoir to the minimum not drain it completely and then start topping up with a new fluid so essentially what you do to bleed the brakes pump the lever three or four times hold it back obviously I can't do this while I'm filming it but you hold it back and then you crack the nipple off lets all the fluid out do the nipple back up let the brake off prime it again that's the manual way of doing it so that's what we're going to do now i'll put the gopro up hopefully you'll be able to capture it. it's a bit tight against the wall here and we'll start bleeding the front brakes So at this point, we're not too worried about going over the maximum mark. You just need to make sure the fluid doesn't run low in the reservoir as you'll pull air back through the system. So at this moment, as I say, we'll just continue bleeding the front brake and then go around and do the other caliper the same. So the final thing to prepare is the coolant chain. So you've got a main bleed screw here. 
I say a bleed screw, it's actually more of a drain screw to get the old coolant out. And then from what I gather, looking on the limited guide that I have, it doesn't really go into a great deal of detail other than filling it up, starting it up, and then letting the pump move the coolant around the system to work out any airlock. So obviously I'll put it on the side stand, put it back on the center stand, and like I say, give the pipes a good squeeze. It doesn't look like there's anything in there Especially like some bikes I've worked on in the past, you have a bleed point on the cylinder heads, can't see anything like that. So I've got an old water bottle here that I'm going to just cut the top off of and then like I say, I'll just use that as my drain trub. So the next step is then to undo the fuel tank, just the screw at the back there. And then you can then get to the main filling cap there, which I've pushed the tank back. We undo the cap and then, uh, yeah, <laughs> coolant went everywhere and half shot out then. I didn't expect it to come out so quickly. I thought it drained out. But as I say, once that's done, it's now a case of just gonna get some fresh water to flush through there, move, remove all the old coolant and then put new coolant in there. So now with the coolant system completely flushed, making sure that any old coolant was out of there and it's now running clear with just normal water, you wanna let that all drain out and then find yourself a new washer for that drain plug, which I've got here with the left one being the old one, the right one being the new and the plug there. And like I said, what we'll do now is fill it up with coolant. Once we're up to the maximum level, we'll run it for a couple of minutes just to get the pump moving, get any coolant moving around the system. And then fingers crossed, we can get it up to operating temperature, check the level again, let it cool down and then fill up if necessary. So I've got a bottle of pink coolant that I've had in the garage. It's probably been in here now, but it's about two years ago, but it hasn't been used and it doesn't have a shelf life providing it's not ran around the system. It's meant to last five years. Now, I'm not massively clued up on coolants, but from what I know, you do not mix green or blue with pink. So what I've had to do, as mentioned, is completely flush the system so that there's nothing in there, obviously nothing in there that's green or blue that would mix with the pink. So I'll now begin filling it up with the pink coolant that I've got on the side. So with the drain screw all torqued up, I've now put around two and a half, it looks like two and a half litres of coolant roughly into the system. The reservoir is showing on the maximum. It's probably quite hard to see without me holding the torch. But because I haven't got any glute bleed screws on the cylinder head, what I will normally do is just squeeze all the hoses just to try and work any bubbles out. Now the problem you've got is there is obviously a thermostat in there which is closed at the moment. So you are gonna to struggle to get all the air out, but this is why you do a quick fire up, try and get it up to a low temperature. You don't want it up to operating temperature because it'll all bubble out of the reserve, but that way, hopefully the stat will open enough and pump enough to pull all the air bubbles out of the system, which we'll do now. So I've completely run the bike up to temperature, let it do a full cycle, which means it gets to about 90 degrees. And then you just wait for the cooling fans to come on. Once the cooling fans on, it means the thermostat is fully open. Switch it back off, let everything cool down. And hopefully you can see the coolant level. It's just between the minimum. It's probably hard to see with my light, but between the minimum and the maximum which is perfect because as the thermostat's opened, it means all the coolant is running around the system and we shouldn't have any air leaks now. So next thing, we'll be taking it on the road on the MOT. So I've just got to put all the bodywork back on and it's done for this evening. So it is great to be back on the old girl. Stop behind a little bit of traffic on a bumpy road here, but man, it is a special thing. Even after all this time away, all the other bikes I've ridden, Oh man, it still puts a smile on my face. So next time guys, we'll be out for a proper road run in it. If you enjoyed the video, make sure you like and subscribe. Until next time.